The Intersection of Masculinity and Intimacy, Deconstructing the Need for Sex. Hello, and welcome back to another episode of Information for Life, Insights and Ideas to Navigate Your World. I'm your host, and today we delve into the shadowy corridors of human desire and social conditioning, focusing primarily on masculinity and its relationship with sex. I want to remind listeners that some of the topics discussed in these podcasts could be uncomfortable for some. While I approach these subjects as inevitable through my lens, it's important to remember that the content shared is not merely my personal opinion. Instead, it is rooted in hard science, supported by evidence, statistics, studies, and extensive research. This is why I always provide my sources in the podcast descriptions, enabling you, the listener, to delve deeper into the subject if you wish. While statistics and research can provide us with a valuable compass to navigate complex, confusing, or intriguing aspects of human behavior, it is crucial to consider each individual on a case-by-case basis. Ultimately, every person is unique and might not conform to general patterns or findings. Now, let's begin with a plain statement. Sex is a basic human need, and its importance is not limited to procreation. Research consistently identifies the role of sex in the physical, emotional, and psychological well-being of individuals. Baumeister, R.F. and Vos, K.D., 2004. Sex is also vital in building intimacy, promoting bonding, and maintaining relationships. But how does this primal need influence men and their behavior? And is it any different for women? Now, some of you might be wondering, why focus on men? Well, There is a cultural narrative, a pervasive thread that associates masculinity with the pursuit of sexual fulfillment, often more aggressively so than femininity. Ingrained societal norms contribute to this perception, causing undue pressure and exacerbating the effects of deprivation. Mihalik, J.R., Locke, B.D., Ludlow, L.H., and others, 2003. It's this narrative we are looking to unravel today. There is anecdotal evidence and research that suggests men, when deprived of sexual interactions for extended periods, may start to behave in ways they might not otherwise. This behavior could include becoming more aggressive, making irrational decisions, or even straying from their ethical boundaries. Baumeister, RF, and Twenge, JM, 2002. Let's consider this in the context of biological and social factors. From a biological perspective, The male sex hormone testosterone has been linked to sex drive, aggression, and risk-taking behavior. Archer J. 2006. Higher testosterone levels may predispose men towards seeking sexual gratification more actively and possibly reacting more intensely to its deprivation. However, it's essential to recognize that these behaviors are not solely determined by biology. Our societal structure, expectations, and norms play a significant role in shaping behavior. Men are often socialized to suppress their emotions, a phenomenon termed normative male alexithymia. Levant R.F., Rankin T.J., William C.M., Hassan N.T., and Smalley K.B., 2010. This suppression can create a reliance on physical outlets such as sex for emotional release. Now, let's take a moment to compare this to women. Does the deprivation of sex affect women in a similar way? There is no straightforward answer, as a complex interplay of biological, social, and cultural factors influences the experiences of women. For instance, on the biological front, women's sexual desires are linked to their menstrual cycles with fluctuations in their sex hormones throughout the cycle. Reagan, PC, 1996. This cycle could potentially result in varying reactions to sex deprivation. Culturally and socially, women have often been discouraged from openly expressing their sexual needs, This repression could lead to a different set of behaviors and reactions to sex deprivation, which might not be as overt as in men. Le Miller, JJ, 2013. We've painted with broad strokes here, but it's important to acknowledge that these experiences can vary greatly from individual to individual. Our aim is not to generalize, but to encourage conversation and reflection about how societal norms and biological factors intersect to influence our behavior, our decisions, and ultimately, our lives. When we view this through the lens of an individual, the effects of deprivation become deeply personal, multifaceted, and complex. For men, sex has traditionally been a pathway for emotional connection and communication, 
considering the societal pressure to otherwise withhold emotional expression. Sex can provide an outlet, a sanctuary even, where feelings can be freely expressed and vulnerabilities shared. Seidler, Z.E., Rice, S.M., River, J., Olif, J.L., and Dylan, H.M., 2017. In the absence of this outlet, things start to warp. Emotional needs remain unaddressed. This lack of emotional fulfillment could result in a buildup of frustration, leading to aggression or perhaps poor judgment as men seek alternative, often harmful ways to cope. It's a silent crisis, a battle fought in shadows, largely ignored by society. To put it plainly, men need to be allowed a broader emotional landscape, one that goes beyond the limits set by societal norms. Healthy relationships, including sexual relationships, can play a crucial role in achieving this, as they provide a safe space for emotional expression and connectivity. Zabrigan, E.L. and Yost, M.R., 2004. Turning our gaze back to women, we find a different but equally intricate tapestry. As we touched on earlier, societal norms have historically suppressed the open expression of women's sexual needs. This repression, when coupled with the biological ebbs and flows of female sex drive, can lead to a complex and nuanced response to sex deprivation. Rather than seeking alternatives or acting out, women may internalize their feelings, leading to emotional distress, diminished self-esteem, and in some cases, depression. Bancroft, J., Loftus, J., and Long, J. S., 2003. Again, it's crucial to emphasize the individual variability in these experiences. If we distill this discussion down to its essence, what we're really talking about is the profound impact of human connection and the absence thereof. Sex is a means of connection, but it's not the only one. Emotional intimacy, vulnerability, companionship, these too are fundamental human needs, and their deprivation can have similarly profound effects. As we wrap up this exploration, we invite you to reflect on the role of sex and intimacy in your life. Consider the societal norms that may influence your behaviors and reactions. Examine the structures that guide or limit your emotional expression. Remember, this isn't a call for sexual liberation alone, but for emotional liberation as well. It's about transcending the rigid, antiquated notions of gender, sexuality, and intimacy to create a society where every individual can express their needs openly without fear of judgment or repercussions. The understanding of sex as a human need should not be weaponized to justify harmful behaviors, but rather should be a stepping stone for us to engage in more in-depth discussions about consent, emotional intelligence, and mental health. The question of deprivation, whether sexual or emotional, touches upon a broader theme, the human yearning for connection and intimacy. So perhaps we should shift our focus from mere sexual fulfillment to fostering deeper, more meaningful connections. We ought to teach our young ones about the importance of emotional openness and the strength found in vulnerability. This way, we can hope to dismantle damaging norms and replace them with more equitable and compassionate societal values. As we draw this episode to a close, I want to leave you with this thought. Perhaps the discomfort we feel during deprivation, the unfulfilled longing, is a call for us to explore deeper parts of ourselves, parts that often remain hidden behind our everyday faces. It's a call to question, a call to grow, and ultimately, a call to connect. So let's keep the conversation going. So let's question the norms, challenge the stereotypes, and strive for a world that celebrates diversity in every form and values emotional intimacy just as much as physical. That's all for today's episode of Information for Life, Insights and Ideas to Navigate Your World. We hope you found this discussion, short as it was, enlightening and thought-provoking. Until next time, remember, life is a journey of learning and growth. Stay curious, stay open, and never stop exploring. If you enjoyed this episode, please consider subscribing to our podcast and sharing it with your friends and family. We always appreciate hearing your thoughts and feedback. If you have any questions or topics you'd like us to explore, please don't hesitate to reach out to us at askinformationforlife at gmail.com. Your input is invaluable in helping us bring the most insightful and relevant discussions to our listeners. Thank you once again for joining us on Information for Life, Insights and Ideas to Navigate Your World. We look forward to the next time we meet in this shared space of curiosity and understanding.
Until then, stay safe, stay connected, and above all, be kind to yourselves. Thank you.